Zosin is not nephrotoxic, and in fact, it may even be nephroprotective. This probably goes against everything that you've learned about Zosin, because all throughout our training, we are taught that Vank and Zosin, in combination, have this synergistic effect to causing worsening acute kidney injury. And there's been multiple studies validating this, uh, which has led to the propagation of this myth that Zosin is nephrotoxic. You can see here, over a decade ago, the FDA placed warnings in the prescribing information for Piperacillin tazobactam that in critically ill patients, it can affect renal function. Some of this was based on a 1,200 patient trial indicating about a 70% increased risk for renal failure with piperacillin and tazobactam compared with other beta-lactam drugs. So I wanted to take you guys through a couple of articles, including a big research paper that came out in 2022. And uh, this uh, website I, I like a lot. This is a poem crit doctor uh, who talks about myth-busting the conditional nephrotoxicity of piperacillin and tazobactam. And again, they kind of talk about the origin of the myth uh, starting around 2011 where several retrospective studies showed increased rates of acute kidney injury. However, the author goes on here to discuss how uh, piperacillin tazobactam is actually a pseudo-nephrotoxin, and how it works is it inhibits these organic anion transporters 1 and 3, which leads to reduced secretion of creatinine into the urine. This actually causes an increase in the serum creatinine, so if you're actually looking and you're defining AKI based on creatinine, that's how you're going to get some of these studies saying that you're having a worsening um, rate of acute kidney injury. However, it does this without hurting the kidney or reducing the GFR. There is no laboratory data to suggest that piperacillin desobactam is nephrotoxic. In fact, blocking organic anion transporters has nephroprotective effects in some animal models. And then clinical studies looking at Vank plus Zosin have found higher creatinine levels, but no increased need in the things for clinical outcomes such as mortality or the need for hemodialysis. He goes on to discuss how 2016 to 22, all these studies kept coming out, just piling on to reinforce this myth. But more recently, there's three sets of data that really disprove the myth of Zosin being nephrotoxic. So number one is going to be some of these studies in these rat models that they did. And you can see here, this is uh, one of the uh, kidney injury markers that they were examining. And the patients, or the, cat, <laughs> the, the rats rather, in the vancomycin-only group had... Uh, kidney injury markers that were significantly elevated. Now, when they gave um, Vank plus uh, Zosin, you actually see that the average range of the acute kidney injury actually seems to be a little bit nephroprotective. They didn't seem to have as high of a range of acute kidney injury. And in fact, uh, when the rats received just Zosin alone, they didn't really see any increase in acute kidney injury compared to the baseline rats who received uh, saline. Number two, um, they started looking at patient-centered outcomes. So the initial studies that said that Zosin caused AKI were all just looking at the creatinine. But if you actually look at things like the hemodialysis rates or the rates of um, mortality, you can see that this didn't really play out clinically. So um, this is a meta-analysis. And again, meta-analysis is uh, kind of our highest level of evidence. They look at all these randomized control trials or cohort studies and they compare them uh, and put them into one. One, uh, meta-analysis. So you see here, this is uh, the Vank and Zosin group on the left and the Vank and Meropenem group on the right. And so um, if it li lies to the right of this line, that's saying that there's lower incidence of acute kidney injury. So you can see all of this favors the Vank and Meropenem group, right? So it seems like, okay, that's pretty definitive, right? Vank and Zosin does seem to have uh, worse outcomes in terms of acute kidney injury. But then when you go into the subgroup analyses, you realize that there are, there's no effect on hemodialysis. So uh, if you have this diamond here, this is the kind of the conglomerate of all the information that's available. And it's crossing over the midline, which means there's no significant difference between the vank zosin group and the vank meropenem group in terms of hemodialysis. And again, there's no effect on mortality. In fact, there may even be slightly a trend towards reduced mortality in the vank zosin group, interestingly enough. But finally, I wanted to talk about this last paper. Uh, this is in 2022 by Miano et al. And the great thing about this study is that it used more accurate measurements of kidney function. So instead of using creatinine, which we know is liable to all sorts of errors and misinterpretations, they used cystatin C, which is a much more up-to-date version of how we can accurately measure GFR. This was done in the University of Pennsylvania uh, with ICU patients, and here's what they found. 
Zosin was associated with higher levels of creatinine and thus higher levels of acute kidney injury as defined by elevated creatinine. However, it was associated with a trend towards lower levels of cystatin C, which actually kind of suggests improved renal function. There was also a trend towards lower rates of dialysis with a relative risk of 0.63, although the confidence interval uh, crossed um, you know, one, so it's not a significant uh, difference. And there were no mortality differences. The other thing they looked at was BUN levels, which were similar between groups. Um, but actually, if you look at the BUN to creatinine ratio, this was lower in the group uh, of patients receiving Zosin. So why don't we actually really quickly take a look into the results of that Miano uh, study back in 2022. And so you can see here, this is the association of vancomycin plus zosin with early changes in creatinine versus cystatin C in critically ill adults, a prospective cohort study. I highly recommend you look into this study if you're interested in reading it a little more in depth. Uh, but my takeaway is that they had a pretty robust study design and there weren't too many qualms that I could find with this paper, uh, just on a brief read at least. Um, and basically what they did is they looked at patients who received Vank and Zosin uh, and compared it to patients who received Vank and Cefepime. And they took a marker of their cystatin C level um, within this one day you know, time window. And then at uh, hour 48, within a one day time window, they also took a repeat cystatin C. And then they also measured things like rates of hemodialysis, mortality, and things like that. In their data analysis, they have both an unweighted group and a weighted group. So the unweighted group is just kind of the raw data. And in the weighted group, they looked at patients um, in, and tried to see if they were sicker than the other sets of patients and if that could have been a confounding variable. And then they tried to adjust for those uh, patients that were relatively more ill. And you can see in the end, they had 561 patients who received Vank and Zosin, um, and then they were excluded for AKI, hemodialysis, or ESRD, and then uh, eventually had 297 patients who were analyzed, and 72 of which uh, did do the cystatin C within that zero hour time frame and that 48 hour time frame. And then the Vank and Cefepime patients, there were 732. And after exclusion, there was 442 left and 120 of them were included in the cystatin C analysis. So looking at the percentage difference in kidney function biomarker concentrations at day two, between the Vank and Cefepime groups and the Vank Zosin groups, there was no difference in the crude measurement of cystatin C. If you just look at the creatinine, however, um, compared to the vank cefepime group and the vank zosin group, you do see that the vank cefepime group had a creatinine of 1.15 and the vank zosin group had a creatinine of 1.46, which is clinically an AKI if we define it by a creatinine increase of greater than 0.3. Looking at the BUN, we see that uh, it was pretty much equivalent among both groups. So 27 in the vank cefepime group and 26.9 in the vank zosin group. In table three, they actually look at the rates of a greater than 50% increase in kidney function biomarkers at day two. So you can see in the Vank cefepime group, 14% uh, of patients had a greater than 50% increase in their cystatin C at day two. And in the Vank zosin group, 19.4% of patients had an increase in their cystatin C. So that actually looks kind of bad. It looks like, you know, there is some more AKI, AKI going on in the Vank zosin group. But when they do the weighted uh, analysis where they adjust for it, they found that the um, relative risk was 0.95. And so there was no significant difference after they did um, some adjustment for the patients in the vanxosin group being a little bit more ill on average. In terms of a greater than 50% increase in creatinine, there was a pretty di big difference as expected. So in the vanxcephapime group, there was an 8.3% of patients who had a greater than 50% increase in creatinine. And for vanxosin, there was a 19.4% increase. And then finally, uh, and potentially the most important thing they looked at is clinical outcomes. So how many of the patients uh, had an AKI requiring dialysis at 14 days? So in the vank cefepime group, 5.9% of patients required dialysis, and only 4.7% of patients required uh, dialysis in the vank zosin group. And when they adjusted for um, confounding factors and increased illness in the vank zosin group, they actually found that the relative risk of a dialysis was 0.63 in uh, the vank zosin group. Um, of course, this wasn't a significant uh, finding, but it was a trend towards a decreased need for dialysis, which kind of goes with that nephroprotective effect that uh, was described in those animal mod models.
In terms of mortality at 30 days, we can see that there was a 34% mortality in the vancefepime group and a 45% mortality in the vanxosin group. But again, once adjusting for those um, illness severity uh, factors, uh, the relative risk was 1.05, which was not a significant difference. So there you have it. That is the data that we have in regards to acute kidney injury with zosin. And if you really look into it, you know, based on the cystatin C, it doesn't seem that there's a very, very clear um, connection with worsening AKI uh, using the cystatin C uh, with zosin. You only really see that with the creatinine. And then when you actually look at the clinical outcomes, you actually see a potential trend towards decreased need for dialysis and no significant change in mortality. So that is the evidence for why Zosin is not nephrotoxic and potentially may actually be nephroprotective. I only recently heard this because I was reading Reddit and I heard a couple of people mention this and I thought it was just so interesting to look into this because all throughout my medical training through medical school and residency, we just learned about how nephrotoxic Zosin is and how it gets such a bad rap. It's going to be horrendous for your patient. And now we can really tell that it seems like it's really just mediated by increasing the creatinine levels. So everybody Everybody thinks that the risk for AKI is much higher with Zosin, but really if we're using a more accurate measurement and we're actually looking at um, clinical outcomes, we actually see potentially even beneficial effects of Zosin. Just a very interesting little tidbit and an example of how uh, myths can be propagated and spread down in medicine. We have a lot of dogma in medicine that kind of gets perpetuated and um, it's only by looking closely into evidence and staying up to date on some of these more recent studies that we really can uh, disprove some of those myths and dogma that are actually inaccurate. Anyways, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are below. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video and peace.